Welcome back to another video with the Afro Hippie Journalist. Um, I've been watching a lot of videos on, well, a lot of commentary videos with a lot of black people and white people talking about police brutality. And one thing that always comes up on the white person's half is, you know, what about black on black crime? And I feel like white people use black on black crime to validate police brutality. That's always what they want to say is, oh, well, what about black on black crime? There's more black people killing black people. Okay, but that's not a race issue. Police brutality is a race issue. And that's one thing that they have a problem with. They want to say, oh, they're not being racist. But look at all these white people who have been killing other white people. And the strategies that the white cops have been trying to do to make sure that the person stays alive. Like the guy who went up, who went and shot up that church and killed nine black people and they took him to fucking Burger King. But then you have these white cops killing black people who haven't even killed anyone. Who haven't done anything. And they're just dead. For what? You know, a lot of white people, they want to, you know, turn a blind eye to white supremacy, white privilege, and say that that's not a real thing. Yes, it is. That's an issue that we have. That's a huge issue that we have. Come on now. So I want to talk about, you know, people. we have this Black Lives Matter movement. And the thing about that is Black Lives Matter, it needs to start with Black people and in our own community. Stop letting these white people be meddlesome into our community. They've always been meddlesome into other people's affairs. Why do you think we're still at war? And for what? We're still at war. Don't even know what we're at war for. We still have troops overseas. And they've been overseas since 2001. That's 15 years ago. 15 years since 9-11. Which would be tomorrow. Which would be September 11th. So... Like I said, they've always been meddlesome, you know, even before um, slavery, you know, our ancestors were in Africa minding their own business. And here come these Europeans talking about, oh, well, since you can grow plants and do all this other stuff, you know, why don't we bring y'all over so y'all can do the stuff for us? And not even I've heard a lot of white people say that black people should be grateful that we were brought over here and, you know, assimilated through slavery, or we would have still been like spear throwers and all this other stuff. I was like, okay, yeah, but were we hurting anyone? No. We were just fine where we were. Anyway, so yes, Black Lives Matter needs to start within the Black community. And I think um, a lot of the reason that we have Black on Black crime is one, education. The education system within these, you know, low-income Black communities is terrible. You have a lot of these Black schools being shut down, and there's not a, you know, these kids don't have a means to get to another school. These other schools that they could be going to or that they are rezoned to are out of, you know, reach. Their parents probably have to work. They don't have a car. There's not public transportation. Therefore, they're not in school. And when they're not in school, they don't have anything anything to occupy their time, they're not being productive, what do they do? They turn to the streets like everyone else. And then when you do have these schools in the black community, is that you have these schools in the black community and you have these teachers who don't care. They tell the kids they're not going to amount to anything. All they're going to do is end up like their mother or like their father, either on drugs, dealing drugs, prostitution, and a gang. All that type of stuff. And when you're telling a child this, they believe that. Kids tend to believe everything that you tell them. They're very impressionable. They don't know how to think for themselves just yet. And that's how they get roped up into all these things. Another reason that we have a lot of black on black crime is that there's not a lot of good quality black influencers you know, there's not a lot of black role models that these kids look up to. These kids look up to rappers and their lifestyles. 
lifestyles that they probably don't even really live. You know, they rap about drugs and money and getting a bunch of women and killing people. And half the time, they've never even done any of that stuff. They've never even been around any of that stuff. But yet, these kids, they believe it. They hear it. And they believe it. And then they follow right along. That's why so many of our youth are in jail. I feel like black youth in these low-income areas are set up to eventually end up in jail. Because their parents and their parents' parents were never given the opportunity to succeed in life. You know, and then they have, you know, this whole affirmative action BS. And it's like, if you're, you know, I feel like we should do away with affirmative action simply because, okay, affirmative action, for those of you who don't know, is that, you know, companies can't not hire someone based on the color of their skin. I feel like we should do away with that. If, if you're not going to hire me because I'm black, I want you to tell me that you're not going to hire me because I'm black. That, but like I said, that's a huge issue that black people are not being given the same opportunities as far as jobs, you know, as far as income as our white counterparts. And that's another huge issue that we have. And in these low income areas, all they know are drugs, gangs, you know, prostitution, all this other stuff that is not conducive of you know, the black community. They need things to be productive. Yes, they do have these boys and girls clubs that try to help, you know, the kids stay off the street, but they can only do so much. I feel like there should be a lot more mentor programs within the black community. I feel like, you know, there should be a lot more, not just boys and girls club, but a lot more community centers I mean, not just one within the black community. There should be several, you know, almost on every block. So these kids know that they have somewhere to go where there will be someone who cares about them and wants to, wants to see them do better in life. The black on black violence has gotten to a point where I'm just like, will there be an end? Will it end before it's too late to where we're all just turned against each other? You know, another thing, Another issue that we have is competition, that we have to compete to be better than the next person, especially among black women. You know, a lot of times black women do not like helping other black women. They don't like, you know, trying to uplift other black women because they struggle to get to the top. Okay, you know what struggle is like. Why wouldn't you want to help someone else do the same? Another black woman who is struggling, you've been there. You know where she's at. Why would you not want to help her? And the same thing with black men. Like, you struggle to get where you are. Why wouldn't you want to help another black man? Within the black community, we're just so pitted against each other. And yes, that has a lot to do with, you know, white supremacy. But the fact of the matter is, we can think for ourselves. Majority of us are grown. We can think for ourselves and we can change the lives of our children. I am a black teacher and I teach in a black school and I always tell my kids, you know, just because someone is making a bad choice does not mean you need to follow, does not mean you need to get roped up into what they're doing. Because you know what's going to happen? You're going to get in trouble right along with them. I teach second grade and I tell them that do not let others influence you because you will get roped up into what they're doing. And that will be a lifelong thing and you will get in trouble. But like I say, our black youth are set up to be in the prison system. If you look at the prison system, majority of the people in prison are black. And the crimes that they're in prison for are nothing compared to the the crimes of the white people who are still walking on the streets. A black person can get 50 years in prison for marijuana while a white person can eat off another person's face and not serve any jail time or molest a child. But those are just my thoughts. Like, comment, share, and subscribe.